Hello, welcome back to the low action. Today is a special day. Today I'm going to do the guitar that basically set this whole low action thing off. I'm going to do the guitar that I've always wanted to do. Uh, today uh, you're going to learn about my most prized possession. Probably the rarest guitar I own and possibly the most rarest guitar you'll ever see. Uh, it's definitely my most valuable guitar. Um, that is my uh, 1977 Charles A. Hoffman handmade acoustic guitar. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, you kind of already saw a video where I talked about the story about how I acquired the guitar, but there's so much more drama surrounding this guitar that we're going to get into today. Uh, stick around because you're going to learn about something really cool. Based in Minneapolis, Hoffman Guitars have provided a full range of services to guitars nationwide since 1971. They provide the finest instrument repair services as well as making their own handcrafted guitars. They are authorized warranty service for Martin Gibson, Guild, Fender, Taylor, and other bigger names. Charles Hoffman has built over 650 guitars to date, which really is not a lot when you compare it to other name brands. That makes these guitars more of a collector's item and super rare. Because they're handcrafted, these guitars are made with the finest materials available. So my wife and I were driving back to Pittsburgh and uh, I saw this little rinky-dink music store in Southington, which is literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it was attached to like a car service place and and uh, I noticed they had resonator guitars, banjos, mandolins hanging in the window. So I said to my wife, I said, I'm going to stop in here. Um, I own a resonator, used to have a Dobro, always had a difficult time finding strings for them. So I, I stopped in this music store thinking if they sell Dobros and resonators, they're going to have strings. So sure enough, I pop in there, I was able to get a couple of sets of strings, and uh, I see the Hoffman uh, uh, sitting on the stand. Now, I had no idea what it was. I just uh, said, wow, that guitar is beat up, it looks old, it looks cool. And I read the tag, and it says Charles A. Hoffman, Minneapolis, March 1977, number 135. So I'm like, what the heck? I've never heard of Hoffman before. So I picked the guitar up, and I strummed it. I was like, my God. It was like angels singing. I was like, this thing sounds amazing, you know? And it looks cool. It's all beat up, you know? It looks old. So I said uh, to the guy who was working at the counter, uh, his name was... Farrell Nottingham. And yes, that was his real name. Sounds like a character from a Monty Python movie. But anyways, I digress. I said to him, I said, what is this guitar? What is a Charles Hoffman? And he's, I don't know, somebody brought it in on consignment and they said it's worth like thousands of dollars. And 
I kind of looked at it and I, and I said, what a, what's the price tag on it? And he said, $750. So I put the guitar down, I paid for my strings, and we left. And I said to my wife, um, if there is a rare guitar out there that's worth thousands of dollars, I know about it. And this isn't something that I know about. So we stopped in Middlefield. Uh, we had dinner at this little Amish restaurant. And while I was there, I, I get on my phone and I start Googling these guitars. And I stumble across their website. And I was like blown away. Uh, Charles Hoffman guitars, the new ones that he's making uh, nowadays, are five to $15,000. And I was like, these guitars are the real deal. So I'm like, I for 750 bucks, it sounds great, it looks great, I gotta buy this guitar, you know? It's probably something super rare. So I went home, uh, I used to have a, a Les Paul standard, and I, I put that on eBay, and that sold fairly quickly. I just threw it up there for 1600 bucks. Someone picked it up, gone. Got the money, drove back down to Southington, and bought the Hoffman. Uh, when I got home, I emailed Charles Hoffman uh, through their website, the Contact Us link, and uh, not sure if I would get a reply. I sent him a bunch of pictures, and I said, you know what is this guitar? What is it made out of? You know, what is it worth looking at the pictures? Is it, did I get ripped off? Did I get a fair deal? Uh, you know, can you tell me anything about it? Not sure if I would get a reply, um, but I did. I got a reply like two days later, a day later, something like that, um, from Charles Hoffman himself. And uh, he uh, gave me the rundown on the guitar, which we'll go over in a little bit, like what the materials are. And he said, with guitars like that, condition is everything. And obviously this one has its share of, of nicks and scratches and dings and dents. Um, so, I mean, he, he put it at, you know, without being able to hold it and, and play it, he kind of said, you know, 2000 to $2,500. So I did okay. Um, I played it for a while, took it out a couple of uh, solo gig things, open mics, what have you. And then I decided that it needed a fret job and uh, definitely needed to be set up. Sound like the intonation was off a little bit and stuff. And uh, the guitar kind of went away for a while. We have a, a, an area uh, a repair guy, um, Rainbow Instrument Repair, who does magnificent work, comes highly recommended. Kenny Lesko is a great luthier does great work. So I'm thinking, well, I'm going to take it to Kenny. I'm going to have the frets redone, have the intonation done, have it set up. I even had, may, set up a meeting with Kenny, and he, he played the guitar and looked at it and gave me a price on it. I'm like, okay, I'll think about it, and I'll get back to you. And uh, he was kind of anxious to see it, and, and he thought it was a really cool guitar. Uh, we were out and about uh, in our little town. I live in a small town outside of Cleveland. And I ran into this guy. Uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but he was a local guitar builder. And I told him about the guitar, and I told him that it needed a fret job and stuff like that. And I, you know, he said, "Oh, I've heard of Hoffman, but I've never seen one." And I was like, "Yeah, well, I have one in 1977, and this is what it needs. And this is when I, you know, I was thinking about taking it to Rainbow." And and this guy insisted. He says, "No, I I want to do the work." And he's like, I build guitars, so obviously I know how to set them up and, and, and I can do an excellent job for you. He's like, I will give you a great price, which was basically half the other guy was going to charge me. He's like, just because I want to work on the guitar. I want it on my bench. I want to take pictures of it. He wrote for a little local magazine, so we wanted to do an article on it. And uh, I said, okay, cool, we'll do it your way. You know, I'll save some money, get the job done. It's We live in the same town. It would be easy. So I dropped the guitar. I go over to his house and drop the guitar off to him, looking at his workbench. I played one of the guitars that he built, and I was just kind of like, eh, whatever. Nice guitars. Not better than that. Uh, but still nice guitars, handmade acoustic guitars. Um, 
So he got the guitar, and he said, ah, I'll just be a couple of weeks. I'm like, okay. So a couple of weeks go by, I send him an email. I said, hey, uh, what's going on with the guitar? How, how's the progress coming along? Oh, I haven't started it yet. Blah, blah, blah. Give me another week. Okay. Give him another week. Call him up. Same thing. Oh, yeah, well, because of this, my wife's out of work. Blah, 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 blah. I have to work extra hours. Give me another couple of weeks. Okay. This went on for a year. And a good part of that year, he stopped returning my messages, stopped returning my phone calls. And the last I heard, not only was he refretting it, but he took the neck off of it because the neck needed to be reset. I'm freaking out because I'm like, this is super rare, super valuable guitar. And it's been gone. And now I'm messaging this guy going, what's going on? Whatever. I, he won't return my calls. He won't return my messages. I'm thinking, this guy just stole my guitar. It's gone. I'm never going to see it again. So I finally got pissed off. And uh, I sent him a message. I said, look, I know where you live. It's not far from me. And I know exactly where your house is. I said, I'm coming over there on Saturday. And I'm going to get my guitar. Uh, I don't care if it's in pieces. I'm picking it up. And this was like a Monday or a Tuesday. I said, I'm coming there on Saturday. And I'm getting my guitar in whatever condition it's in. And I'm not paying you. You know? You're just going to give me... If you, are, if you don't answer your door or you're not home, I'm kicking in the door to your workshop and taking what's mine. But I'm getting my guitar back. If you have a problem with that, you can notify the police. I've already talked to an attorney. I'm getting my guitar back. Um, I just kind of put my foot down. So he replied back. He's like, okay, I'll have it done by Saturday, whatever. So I go to his house, and the guitar was done. But I could tell... It, it was rushed. Um, the neck was put back on. The frets were done. And he did an okay job. The fret job wasn't bad. But the action was terrible. It was almost unplayable. And I got my guitar back. I paid him a little bit of money for putting it back together, you know, just to be in good faith. I took my guitar. He's like, bring it back in a couple of weeks and I'll adjust the action again. You know, and I'm just like, yeah, okay, I'll give you a call. And no, you're never touching this guitar again because I went without it for a year. And then when I got it back, I really hated the way it played. And I was heartbroken, you know. So I put it in a case and, uh, and put it away for a while. And uh, finally one day my wife uh, said to me, you know, we've been kind of kicking around the idea. She's like, you need to take it to Len." Uh, uh, Kenny Lesko at the, the Rainbow and get it fixed properly. So I finally made another appointment to, to, to meet with Kenny and uh, hand the guitar over to him. And I was like, just set the action, check the neck. I don't know what this... I told him the whole story and uh, he looked at the guitar and he said, the fret job is actually pretty well. The neck is reset beautifully, so the neck is where it should be. So... In that sense, the other guy did that stuff correctly, but the action was just terrible. So he, he, he did a little neck adjustment and, and a little little setup on it and uh, gave it back to me in a, in, a, in a week, within a week, and it's been great ever since. Um, I do keep it tuned in either E flat, D, somewhere in there. A little, uh, I keep it a little down tuned just to, because it's old and it's been through so much. I want to keep some of the. Um, some of the pressure off the neck, whatever I can get off of it, I keep off of it. Um, so that is the story of my Charles Hoffman. Now we're going to get into the specs. So as I stated before, this guitar is handmade by Charles Hoffman. Uh, it is dated March 1977, and this is, this is the 135th guitar he ever made. Um, when I did e send him the email and he replied back, he told me all about it. This is a solid Sitka spruce top. 
And of course, being so old, it has like the little cracks in the uh, the clear coat as well as a bunch of scratches and dings and dents from use over the years. This guitar was was played. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it is a mahogany neck um, with the skunk stripe all the way up the neck to the headstock. It's an African uh, African mahogany back and sides, all solid woods. Uh, ebony fingerboard, ebony bridge, uh, ebony truss rod cover. The truss rod cover is even ebony. Uh, Spurzel tuners, um, bone nut. You have abalone pearl uh, inlays as well as abalone pearl on the logo on the headstock. Um, everybody that has played this guitar has said that there is nothing else in the world that sounds like this guitar. Uh, it is that freaking phenomenal. Um, when I bought it, it did come with the original case. The original case is destroyed. Uh, I picked up a Huma case, which is a decent wood shell, like hard shell case, but it has like a, a built-in hydrometer and a humidifier system, so I can keep the guitar properly humidified all year long. Um, yeah, that's about it. Let's give it a listen. I'm not the best acoustic guitar player. You're going to get a couple of sound samples. They'll be short. Uh, one with a pick, one which is my interpretation of finger style. Uh, I'm a bass player. I just love guitars. So uh, here's some sound samples I put together for you. So that is my 1977 Charles A. Hoffman acoustic guitar. Super rare. I guarantee you, you're going to have a hard time finding another one. There are some Hoffman guitars uh, out there. Um, just kind of searching around, preparing for this video, doing some research, I did notice that there is one on Reverb right now for about $5,600. A little different style cutaway. Um, this is a Dreadnought style. There isn't very many. He didn't make very many Dreadnought styles. Uh, keep in mind, he only made 650 guitars total, and he's made some nylon strings, some 12 strings, jumbos, concert styles. So those weren't all Dreadnoughts. Uh, at some point over the years, someone did put a passive uh, pickup in it. So you can plug it in, but it is passive. There is obviously no controls on the guitar. There's no volume, treble, bass, middle. Uh, I usually run it through a little Fishman preamp just so I can adjust some EQ levels to the room I'm playing in, put it in phase, out of phase, whatever. Um, those things come highly recommended. So that's it. That is my most prized possession. It is insured, so don't think about trying to steal it. And I have guns. <laughs> just kidding anyways thank you for watching um, please like share subscribe we'll see you next time